Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Hey, since the starters for the Dallas Cowboys are not playing in the preseason games, it's given guys like rookie running back number 42, Deuce McAllister, a great shot at making this team. Saturday at Seattle had a pretty good stat line, including this 14-yard touchdown run. Cowboys lost 22-14 in the first preseason game against the Jaguars. Deuce rushed for 50 yards on eight carries, including a four-yard TD run. So he has found the end zone Two weeks in a row, pretty impressive show for the sixth round draft pick. Not only impressive, but this week was better than last. I feel like uh, I was more comfortable as, as far as playing faster. Uh, last week, I feel like there were a couple of times where that be in pass protection or where that be uh, uh, running the football that I kind of uh, wasn't playing as fast as I was thinking a little bit more. But another game under my belt, second game, I feel like I played a little bit faster. Right? He's fun to watch, too. Hey, Houston Texans head coach Jamico Ryans canceled joint practices with the Saints this week because he said his team is just too banged up. So he thought it was best to stay home in Houston to practice against each other at the Methodist Training Center. Yes, with these practices, our guys are still competing. Uh, and what I want to see from our guys as we go out to practice is just improve on the, the fundamentals and the techniques, things we need to improve on from the game, things we can get better at. It's things that we can control, which is encouraging. And so that's what I'm looking for our guys to just hone in on the details of their assignments, the details of their job, and see if we can get you know, a little bit better this week. And I think this would be a great opportunity to do that going against each other. The Cowboys are going to finish up their preseason Saturday night at 7 against the Raiders. That's at home at AT&T Stadium. And then Texans are going to play their final preseason Sunday at 7 in New Orleans against the Saints. Hey, just up I-35, the Texas State Bobcats have what you like to see, a serious battle at quarterback. Auburn transfer T.J. Finley, Arkansas transfer Malik Hornsby, Baylor transfer C.J. Rogers, and P.J. Hatter appear to be the top four, and neither one of them has taken a game snap for the Cats. Three of those guys are from Power 5 programs, so that's pretty impressive. And here's Coach Keeney on the newest transfer, Finley. Yeah, I think he's, he's done really well. Um, he's a true pro. Like I said, he's been coached well. Um, I think... You know, he, he's only had so many practices, uh, you know, with us. So sometimes you, you forget that, that he wasn't with us in the spring. Um, he wasn't with us all of summer. So um, I think he's done a really good job of, of um, you know, learning the playbook and going out there and, and, and putting it on the field. So uh, really, really happy with, with where he's at. And quarterback Carson Kaiser from Bernie, champion, also on the Bobcats roster. So you figure... Of all these guys playing that position, somebody is going to, like, separate themselves from the pack and Walk get that Walk away with it, yeah. yeah. All right, today at 5, if you've used Facebook, and of course you have in the last 16 years, you could have a little bit of money coming your way, but you have to take action, and the clock is ticking. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us how some big lawsuit settlements over popular products like Facebook can mean free money for you. It's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Welcome back. As is always the case, with the rain and the storms come issues, and we've already started to see one. Yeah, well, we're looking there. You can see out over the uh, gulf there, the waves kicking up a little bit. The, the storm surge with this uh, system wasn't huge, uh, but we did feel it along the coast. Corpus Christi got some wind gusts up to around 60 miles per hour. I want to start, though, back with the radar. Now, I want to be very clear. This is not current. This is from 1213, so about 15 minutes ago. But this is why that tornado warning was issued. So you see Pearsall here, and this was where we detected a little bit of a couple, just northeast of Pearsall. If we saw a tropical funnel, that's likely where it was. But this was for one frame, and that's kind of the nature of this activity. If we're going to see these little uh, quick spin-ups, these little quick funnels, they don't last very long. And we're going to put this back into motion and zoom out some. Uh, that storm that came through Pearsall is now well to the west now. These things are moving at about 40 miles per hour. It's possible that was dropping some small hail too. You look at the signature there on the radar and you can tell this was a pretty powerful storm. Again, moving fast and now moving into western parts of Frio County. You're in the clear here in Pearsall now, but you're still seeing some heavy rain, still seeing some lightning strikes, and you're probably getting uh, some good rainfall totals out of this, which is fantastic uh, for our friends down there in Pearsall along I-35. Let's zoom out some 
and we've got another little cell there in northeastern Frio County. Just good steady rain as you get down to Catula, Creso Springs, the rain starting to kick in there and it's going to be steady throughout the afternoon so you could pick up some decent totals. Uh, George West already picked up about an inch of rain out of all uh, out of all this. Kennedy, same story. You're within the light rain. You're going to be on the northern periphery of it, but you're going to get light rain over the next couple of hours. As for San Antonio, not the case for us. We're just a little too far north to miss out on the good steady stuff, but we may see some of these passing showers and we continue to see some of this activity. Uh, here moving through uh, Bear County now, Southern Bear County, we are getting a shower, a good downpour. This is going to cross over I-37 there, just south of Elmendorf along 1604. No lightning strikes with this, uh, but some good tropical rain as uh, these are also moving west at about 40 miles per hour. Poth, Floresville, you're about to get some good rain. And just moved through Denhocken, Stockdale, you got a shower there and more activity up uh, to the north and east of Nixon. So the opportunity is there for a few more showers and storms this afternoon. We're going to call for a 40% chance here in San Antonio. Temperatures should top out in the low 90s because we have the cloud cover and that potential for rain. Uh, it will become partly cloudy tonight, though, and the heat's back on for tomorrow. More on that forecast here in just a couple of minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Meantime, rescue crews using helicopters to save adults and children dangling hundreds of feet above a disabled cable car in Pakistan. Two children already rescued, but right now they're working to save four more children and two adults. The people in that cable car trapped for hours before the rescuers could even arrive on the scene to free them. One of the cables snapped while the eight people were crossing a river canyon. The children were on their way to school. Villagers frequently use these cable cars to get around Pakistan's mountainous regions. Meantime, back here at home, a scary situation for a bus driver and the few students on that school bus. The driver was dropping off the students when the bus fell right through the street. Today, crews finished making repairs and refilled the hole with dirt and gravel. The incident with the bus happened yesterday in a northeast side cul-de-sac. The Judson ISD bus eventually pulled out by a couple of wreckers. The district says two students were on board at the time, but are OK. Those who live in the area say this was a moment that should have never happened. A leak from the water, whatever pipes are in the road, and uh, it's, it's usually not bad, but now it's gotten worse and SAWS has ignored it. This call was made, you know, two, three days ago, and uh, it just got progressively worse, and we did not miss out on calling each and every day. So we asked SAWS about that reported water leak. A SAW spokeswoman says a water main break caused a trench to collapse. It was scheduled for repair Sunday night. However, crews were busy with higher priority calls. SAWS says it has 52 crews working 24-7 on water leaks and water main breaks. It had 729 of those last month, and August is expected to peak at about 940 breaks and leaks. The Biden administration officially launching its new student loan repayment program. It's called SAVE, and it aims to significantly lower payments and reduce overall loan costs for millions of people. The White House says the income-driven repayment plan will calculate payments based on the borrower's income and family size, not the loan balance. It'll also forgive remaining balances after a certain number of years. The administration encouraging borrowers to apply for the plan as soon as possible, and that way the account changes will have time to take effect before the current year's long payment pause ends in October. The Food and Drug Administration has approved a new vaccine to protect newborns against RSV. Pfizer's vaccine is actually given to mothers while they are still pregnant. From there, it provides protection to babies that they carry with them through birth. The shot is 82% effective at preventing severe RSV in newborns. But that protection wanes quickly and is only meant to last six months. A warning now about a scam that is sweeping social media, tricking people into thinking they can get a government grant. How some are losing big money when they fall for this one. And now to that warning about a scheme targeting people on social media so crooks can take your personal information and your money. ABC's Ariel Reshef has a look at the scam. That is people thinking that they could be in for a big payday only to lose thousands of dollars in the process.
An urgent warning about a new scam infiltrating social media, falsely claiming you could win a grant from the U.S. government. This fraud is really convincing. Scammers are stealing our official seals and using them. Investigators at the U.S. Health and Human Services Department say they're seeing a sharp uptick in these scams, offering free government grants to start a business or buy a home or pay for school tuition. The sham post shared by supposed agents claiming to be associated with HHS. According to investigators, the scammers steal money from victims by posing as a trusted family member or friend on social media, then luring them to a fake HHS website, which requests personal and financial information to apply for the grant. Who's being targeted by this scam? I mean, it's anyone from 18 to 80. I've seen individuals being contacted who are students who are uh, retired, really anyone and everyone. Authorities saying some scammers even sending photos of fraudulent checks to try and convince the victim these grants are legitimate. HHS says they've seen losses upwards of ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Former FBI agent Rich Frankel says this type of scam is more dangerous because scammers are monitoring their victims social media. You know, you may put on social media, pray for me. You know, I'm, I'm having this trouble. And now they're able to use that to their advantage to actually craft a question that really targets you. And a stark reminder. The government will never call you and ask for your personal information. If you get any of these calls, hang up. Outside with live cam, once again, going down to Galveston. You can see the pier out there. I don't think anybody's on the roller coaster or the Ferris wheel right now, but there's some rain coming. And they're using umbrellas, and that's... Such a nice sight. Yes, and we've got some pictures coming out of Rockport and Port A too. Same, same kind of picture, rain coming down, some gusty winds. And I mean, uh, I, when I tell you we're missing it by this much, uh, really, this is the edge of the kind of the rain shield and San Antonio is just north of that. But we are starting to see some development here in Southern Bear County, more showers developing out to the east. So we should at least see some passing showers and some cooler temperatures today. We're gonna talk more about it coming up. We may not be getting a lot here, but at least somebody's getting something, and that's nice to see. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of shaving yeah. the southern part of Bear County right now, but there are some outliers that could sure. come in. Well, what's encouraging, guys, is this shield of rain is trying to lift north ever so slightly. I don't think we're going to get in on just the good steady rain here in San Antonio, but we are starting to see more development, and this is good. You can feel the tropical nature outside as you walk out the door. We've got a lot of clouds, and I think this really keeps temperatures down. So let's get right back to radar. And I will tell you that threat for the tornado there uh, in Frio County near Pearsall has diminished. So good news there. Just a thunderstorm with lightning and again, maybe, maybe some small hail. As uh, we look at the uh, radar right now, you can see some of those scattered showers coming in east to west with the rotation of Tropical Storm Herald as it continues to move inland. And then you've got the steady shield of rain from Catula, Dilly, Crystal City, Carrizo Springs over to Beeville, Kennedy, Goliad. Those are areas that are going to see some pretty good rainfall totals. And uh, Mia was working on some of the rainfall totals here recently. And it looks like uh, George West is almost up to an inch of rain there just to our south and east. So, there is some good rain to be had and there's probably some lightning strikes mixed in there and it's just it's just a good tropical nature where you're going to get a lot of rain at once. It's going to come down pretty heavy uh, just because there's so much moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, let's look a little closer here at San Antonio and we do have one storm cell there in the southern part of Bear County. This is moving right towards Somerset. So you're about to get some rain there and we are uh, noticing some lightning strikes. This has just crossed over 281. So it'll slowly make its way across uh, 16 and then towards Somerset there on the southwest side of San Antonio. Expect some heavy rain out of this as it comes through, but it is moving fast. So the rainfall rates are heavy and high, uh, but it doesn't last very long. We've got more showers though behind that and uh, we're seeing some rain there along 181. Floresville, you just got a quick shower. Now you're getting another one. And let's look at the rainfall rates just out of curiosity here because again, the atmosphere has just so much moisture in it. We can see how quickly uh, the rain is coming down. And where you see that purple color, that's always an indication that there's some pretty heavy rain involved. So the rainfall rate's about four inches per hour. That's, that's a good amount of rain. It can cause some very brief street flooding. Uh, wouldn't last very long, but you may see that in some of the kind of the low-lying areas there in some of the side streets around Floresville. 
and we'll probably get some more of that throughout the day as these showers continue to develop and uh, work their way off to the west. Uh, everything's moving east to west and the little shower here starting to move into Guadalupe County and that's probably moving west. We'll see if these hold together uh, towards San Antonio. We're going to keep in that 40% chance of rain and if you're watching from Poteet, Pleasanton, good rain there too. So it's all it's all good news and as we look at the forecast here, this model uh, does show some of that rain creeping up into San Antonio by 2 o'clock. A few more showers coming through 3 or 4. And then by dinner time, a lot of this is starting to push west. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, you get in on the good rain too. Areas that certainly need it. And then uh, this really begins to move out of the area tonight with just a few lingering showers. Now we talked about those who truly need the rain and we all need it. Uh, but man, I wish we could get some here across the hill country, Kendall County, Canyon Lake, Blanco up to Fredericksburg. This is the area that's been hit hardest by the drought. And by and large, you're going to miss out on the rain today. I'm sorry to say maybe a tenth of an inch up there. Least amount of rain is going to be San Antonio points north. We're talking about a quarter of an inch. But the, as you go south, as quickly as Pleasanton and places like Beeville, you start to get into an inch to three inches. And then Corpus Christi over to Laredo, we're looking at two to four inches, maybe some higher totals. Outside right now, uh, we've got cloudy skies, a few showers there on the horizon, and temperatures sitting at 90 degrees, but it feels like 95. New Braunfels, 92, feels like 101. So much moisture in the atmosphere, the heat index is rather high. 97 is what it feels like in Seguin. We've got some gusty winds involved here too. Gust 30 to 35 on the north side of this circulation. Corpus Christi is still getting some winds gusting to 48, so it is going to be a breezy day. Forecast, 40% chance of rain at 3 o'clock, 92. 93 is about where we top out, I think. Temperature shouldn't climb much higher than that. And then tonight, we'll just keep in some very small chances of rain. Extended forecast, 100 Wednesday, 103 Thursday. There are some 20% rain chances Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, afternoon pop-up stuff but it stays hot. We are going to set the record for most triple digit days in a year, almost for sure as that heat returns later this week. We'll be right back. Streaming now. Um, we're about five to 600 bucks a month on, on water usage. Their water bill more than doubled from one month to the next after a pipe sprung a leak. We, we had a break. Uh, the ground movement happens all over San Antonio. A few weeks later, we get a bill in the mail for a million gallons of water, $15,580. That's just ridiculous. They've been bullying us, intimidating us. Now Saw says it's time to pay up or have the water shut off. KSAT investigates the water company's policies on outrageously high bills. Streaming now on these platforms. We are officially just days away from the second annual KSAT Pigskin Classic. Antonian, Holy Cross, Southside, Somerset, Jefferson, Uvalde, O'Connor, and Brandeis all taking part in the two-day event. It begins Friday night, August 25th. That's this Friday. Our triple header is Saturday, August 26th. We are pumped. And you can be a part of it. You can still get your tickets for the KSAT Pigskin Classic. They're on sale now, and you can find a link on KSAT.com. All of the games are taking place at the Alamo Dome, where it's nice and cool inside. And if you aren't a KSAT insider, make sure to sign up so you can get the best seats in the house, along with other perks. Just look for this story on our website. And our KSAT community team is all about it, too. We are going to be collecting donations for the San Antonio Food Bank during all four of those games of the KSAT Pigskin Classic right now. Just scan the code on your screen. You can make a donation right away. Or you can head over to our website, KSAT.com, and see a full list of all the items the food bank says they need the most. And speaking of getting all fired up for the weekend, Mike and Fiona, they've had a lot of cheer groups, organizations mm -hmm. on SA Live. We've got another one coming up today, so this it, is fun. It has been fantastic having all these folks here. And some of the guys are going to see Saturday, ladies, <laughs> the Uvalde Coyote Cheer Squad. We're going to be chatting with them and what it's like to get ready to cheer in the dome. And of course, the Uvalde Band. Yes. So we are going to highlight them as well. All right. That gets us to our question of the day. Where'd you go to high school? Yeah. So you, we've got a QR code that you're going to be able to scan and you give a shout out to your high school. Maybe if you're still in high school, maybe you're going to Uvalde, a graduate of Uvalde High School, right? All right. Hey, this is the week leading up to Pigskin Classic, KSAT Pigskin Classic. Also, Restaurant Week, our dear friend Leo Davila is here. 
how to dress a salad, right? There's a technique to it. For sure. So in a bowl, a lot of people just want to pour it right on top, but we don't want to do that to wilt the green. So we'll go around the bowl. Okay. And then you kind of just use the edges to get everything nice, tossed, and glistening. All right. He's got a couple of great dishes and a great deal for you coming up next week as well. And Jen checks out the biggest little sliders in Texas. Yes, indeed. That's right, great things come in small packages, right, Savvy Sliders? It's the only location in Texas, yes, located right here in San Antonio. Look at these, we're getting a sample of the menu, and we're gonna tell you about the grand opening happening very soon. There is another Equalizer movie coming out. Yes, Equalizer 3, and if you wanna see how they got those fantastic moves, we're going to give you a sneak peek at the martial arts. That whole lot more, and the Coyote Cheerleaders. Woo!